With Super Bowl coming up, Pepsi already released their halftime show trailer, where you can see all the different artists that will be performing there. And in there you can see Eminem throwing text to himself in a 3D space and it looks super cool. And that is exactly what we'll be recreating today. So what we're going to need for this shot, well, we're going to take a moving shot where we move around our talent. Now for the light setup, it's quite basic. We're going to use a key light, a backlight, and we're also going to use a colored fill light. Because the text in front of our talent is going to emit light, we're going to recreate that with our new roto light, the EOS 2. Now besides your moving shot, your basic lighting and your extra colored light on your talent, you don't need anything else. Just make sure that the background has enough textures so the tracking in After Effects will work. And that's it. Stop the better film, Timo! So I ordered a couple of new frames. These are the translucent filters. Really good if you just want to have 100% intensity. Uh, just uh, throw your light through it and you get the best lighting quality possible. Nah, it's just a joke, guys. You put filters in these. Look at that, a soft filter. Now, together with those frames, I also ordered a couple of uh, light stands. These are the ones from Cupo. Really good light stands. However, I ordered them in August. So uh, they kind of came six months too late. I, I actually forgot about this order. He's lying. He was every day complaining about where are my light stands. We got two brand new lights right here today from Royal Lights. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video as well. We talked about these a little while back as they started a Kickstarter for these products. Well, today they are out. Now, what's so special about these lights? Well, first of all, this is the AOS 2 light, which is a bigger light. And then we've got this smaller portable light, which you can mount to a small tripod, tuck it away somewhere, or mount it onto your camera. This right here is the Neo 3. Now, these two right here actually share the same technology as their high-end lights. Over there, we can see a Rotolite Titan light, which we covered, I think, last year, which is a beast of a light, but it is more expensive. Well, they brought that in here into two super affordable lights. Now, what does that technology mean? Well, first of all, we get superior LED image quality with a CRI up to 99%. Both are RGB, as you've probably noticed already, I can easily change the colors through their touchscreen menu on the back. Now, the software side of things is also very interesting in this light. You know, we get the CCT control, making a daylight or tungsten. We got the RGB or the HSI setting, but also we get a library of more than 2,500 gels in there. So if you really want to fine tune and find the right color, you can find it right in here. But it even goes further than that. We also have a special effects menu right in here. So we can choose from a variety of uh, certain effects like the strobe light and everything, got lightning. And it also gives you more control over these presets. For example, the gunshot. I can actually use this light now as a gun and fire it off like that. Pew, pew, pew. I can change the shape of the gun. So maybe I'm shooting with like a smaller gun or like a bigger gun or something. I can all change that in here. And as I'm showing Showcasing all of that here with the AOS 2, we get the same thing in the Neo 3. All the gels are in here, all of those effects are in here, like lightning. Look at that, it feels like it could rain here in the studio any moment now. On the Neo 3, we have this soft filter, this cap, which you can take off and on. But we also have that here for the bigger lights. And now they claim that it's the brightest light on the market in its kind. And I can certainly believe that. I mean, if you just look at it, this has some serious power output and I'm actually using it on a V-mount battery right now. You can also just plug it into the power. So that is, in a nutshell, the AOS 2 and the Neo 3 light. Definitely make sure to check these out. You can find the link in the description down below with all the information and how to order. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, they're also working on a native app to control these lights with, so you can just control them wirelessly with your phone. Really cool. It's not out yet, but uh, they're working on it and it's coming out soon. The first step is the tracking of our camera movement. So with the shot selected in our composition, we head over to the tracker panel. If you can't find it, look under window. In the tracker panel, we are going to press the track camera option. Let After Effects do its thing and once it's done, we can see these colored tracking points. While hovering over them, we also see a target circle. We look for a point where this circle lays flat on a surface. For example, our back wall. Once found, we right-click and choose set ground plane and origin. Then we again right 
clicked on the exact same position, but this time we will be choosing the create solid and camera option. And you guessed it, it's going to create a camera and a solid layer on that exact same spot. Now that you have a beautiful tracking, let's start placing our text. With the text tool, we typed whatever we want, gave it a certain font, color, and then made the text layer 3D. The text will now jump to somewhere random, but to easily place it correctly in our 3D space, we just copy the transform properties of our solid layer and paste it to our text layer. First, reset the anchor point property of the text layer, and now with the axis control, we move the text over the Z axis forward in front of our talent. With the X and Y controls, we place and rotate the text on the right spot. Now keep adding text by duplicating the original text and relocating it. Some of those texts we are going to animate in sync with the talent's hands. This we can easily do by keyframing the position and the orientation of the text layers. Of course, don't forget to turn on the motion blur for the animated text. Remember how many text layers you animated and duplicate the camera layer that many times. Then we selected every text we didn't animate it and one camera layer. Pre-compose them and gave it a proper name. Next, we select one animated text layer and one camera and again pre-compose them. Do this for every animated text. Why are we doing this? Well, we're going to add a few effects to the text and they won't work on 3D layers. So with every text pre-composed, let's add a glow effect to them. We use the optical glow from Red Giant. The native glow will also do the trick, but we love the optical glow. Next, we are going to add some light rays to the text. Again, the native CC light burst will work perfectly, but we will be using the Red Giant shine effect, which works much smoother than the CC light burst. But first, we need to track a certain point on our talent's body. This point will determine the light ray angles. With a simple motion tracking, choose a contrast-rich point. Track it and add the tracking data to a null object. Now we took our shine effect and added it to a text. Alt clicked on the source point property of the shine effect and with the pick whip tool we parented to the position of a null object and now our light rays will always emit from our talent's direction. We then copy and paste the shine effect to every text as a last detail will also animate the glow for the moving text and maybe use some extra directional blur. Now, we had a great question coming in from Darian Yates. He asks, by any chance, do you guys still look at comments from old videos? I have a question. Well, yes, if you place a new comment, it comes in our list of latest comments, so we can definitely check it out. And actually, we want to answer your questions in every copycat we upload. So if you're stuck with something in After Effects, with Unreal Engine, or just filmmaking in general, go ahead and ask us in the comments down below. And who knows, maybe in the next video, we'll pick out your question. Now that your text is done, it's time for the distortion. As you can see in their video, every time you text collides, it leaves a ripple distortion behind. So first of all, we create a new solid. On this solid, we'll add the CC ripple pulse effect. And let's check the radar bump map before we change the settings, otherwise we won't see anything. Now at the beginning of the layer, we'll set the pulse level to minus 100. Go two frames further in time and change it to zero. Then again, go two frames further in time and set it back to minus 100. Make sure this pattern extends over the whole length of your layer. Change the speed of these ripples by setting the time span to 6 and the amplitude to 250. To alter the shape of the circles to that topology shape, we can add the turbulence displays effect to our layer. Play around with the amount and the size until you have something that you like. Make sure this effect covers the screen from the beginning to end with ripples. If it isn't, just drag your clip to the left and keep adding keyframes until it's completely filled. Now we need one more ripple to reveal our small ripples. So create a circle shape and position it where the collision should take place. Make sure that the fill is turned off and that we have a wide stroke. Look for the point where the text hits each other and set the keyframe for the scale to 30. Go one frame back and set it to 0. Go 15-ish frames further in time again and scale it up so the circle leaves the screen. Let's also make it a bit smoother by setting the second keyframe to easy ease out. Adjust the stroke width of the circle so in the beginning it looks like a closed circle, but after a few frames it decreases. And to finish it off we can keyframe the opacity so it fades out. Turn on the motion blur of this layer so that the edges aren't too sharp. Head over to the track matte option of the solid and set it to luma matte. If you're shot isn't head on like in our case, you can use the 3D option to rotate your layers so the perspective sits right. All we have to do now is use what we made on our clip. So let's pre-comb these layers and turn the motion blur on again. Let's also move this layer in between our colliding text layers. Head over to the effect library and look for the displacement map effect, which we can drag onto our video clip. In the settings, set the displacement map layer to our pre-composed layer. Change the use for horizontal and vertical displacement option, both to luminance. And let's also increase both values. Let's also copy this effect and paste it onto our text, which sits behind the distortion. Now, to finish it off, disable the visibility of our pre-composed layer and our impact distortion should be working perfectly. Here we go. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor hey, On the road, here we go, here we go
get back to work. And that was it again, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Rotolite, for the support. And as always, stay creative. Now, here on my left, guys, you can find out more and other cool videos, so definitely check that out.